patch 14.5 actually changed a fair bit for every role. So, welcome to our latest tier list covering the best champs you can either main or counterpick in the current meta, starting with top lane. The main changes on top lane this patch are the adjustments to tank itemization, nerfs to strong laners like Yorick and Zack, as well as a mini rework to Wukong to allow him to find some refuge back in the top lane. Firstly, the nerfs to Frozen Heart do affect many matchup spikes and makes teamfighting tanks less effective at shutting down AD carries. However, there were also buffs to Sunfire, making it a real item to complete over just sitting on the barmies. These changes will still see tanks in the top lane in a lower overall power level, but for those that can think critically about the itemization, the changes will about cancel each other out. The first champion that needs highlighting for yet another patch is Aatrox. This champion is an absolute demon in the top lane and is escaping yet another patch cycle where he is barely touched. In the current state of top lane, it becomes increasingly harder to effectively build heal cut in many scenarios, and lethality allows the champ to scale throughout the game based on your proficiency at the champion. And if you feel like you can't actually itemize hyper aggressively, then you can just build strong bruiser items and become a beast without even really thinking as Aatrox. Next up, if you haven't already signed up to GameLeap.com, then the time is now. We have hundreds and hundreds of lol guides authored by professional coaches and challenger players covering every element of League, from all five champion roles, lane micro, and macro decision making. Make sure to sign up below right now by clicking the link at the top of the description box to jumpstart your path to challenger. And with that said, back to the list. A newcomer to the top lane kings is Wukong. With the adjustments made to his passive and other previous buffs and quality of life changes to his Q, as well as recent changes to Black Cleaver to make it a stronger early game item, Wukong has solidified his place as a strong top laner. The build is as follows. Sundered Sky, Black Cleaver, Sterex, into any situational bruiser item. Wukong has been a premier teamfighting bruiser ever since his mini rework, and now that he is strong in the top lane, it may be hard to root him out of the meta. His trade patterns have become extremely simplified with the recent passive changes, allowing him to take unlosable short trades. His big weakness is playing into AP champions that don't care about his armor passive and can neutralize his early trade patterns. Next up, Renekton is still the same monster as he was in the last patch, and with a nerf to the tankier options in the top lane, Renekton is able to hard destroy his enemies in 14.5, becoming a very strong flat lethality champ. He's found interesting and destructive ways to abuse the profaned Hydra to play very fast combos with a full W Max build setup. Renekton's are also finding success with three points into W Max. Overall, the croc in the top is able to create very strong pressure advantages and push out the enemy from being able to breathe in the top lane. Moving on to mid, this is another patch where there are very little changes made to mid laners. However, the changes that have been made in this patch are big for the more niche champions like Vex and Vega. The Vex changes are actually pretty nice quality of life adjustments that allow the champ to play out more short trades that will result in winning more short fight scenarios. Vex's main strength as a champion comes from her ability to fight off high mobility quick burst champs, and with the buffs to how she generates her passive and the proc damage on her passive, these quick trade pattern scenarios will be easier overall to play into. The changes to Vega are reasonably meaningless, nice, but overall, they don't affect how the champion plays very much and will not really affect his tier list placement a whole lot. Same as last patch, Ari is still extremely dominant, has a strong lane phase and straightforward fighting patterns. With the adaptations of the build, with the early adjustments of Malignant's last patch allowing for a strong spike at 2700 gold, Ari can look for a clear entrance to just about any fight. Her interactions with Lichbane were nerfed slightly, but with small adaptations, you can still go the Shadowflame second build to win out many early fights. We'd also like to preach the strength of Aurelian's soul, and if you have not already taken a look at this champ, we strongly encourage you to look at how this champion scales. If piloted correctly, Aurelian has almost a guaranteed teamfight win when he gets his max stacked ult. And as long as you play around this condition, the game should be pretty simple to plan around. It does require a few games to get used to though, so don't immediately plan on picking it the first time in ranked. Maybe check out a few guides first, or play him in normals to get your celestial groove on. Now for the ADC role in 14.5, we've got adjustments to Kogmo and Sever to help him get into a playable place in the meta, some pretty hard nerfs to Vayne and Senna, and an interesting rework to Smolder. Overall, the main highlights of ADC are still going to be Kai'Sa, Varus and Smolder, with Smolder definitely taking the cake for this patch. It is a bit of a mystery as to what Riot was thinking with these 
changes to Smolder. The champion gained even more damage when you build more AD and crit, and they took away a lot of the interactions with the more tanky build. But the higher play rate and win rate build of crit damage is getting buffed. So if you were able to master this champ to get past the tough early game, he will be overall stronger as a champion and able to play out the late game scenarios with ease. Kaisa, similar to last patch, gained a lot of strength due to her ability to shift her itemization to whatever the game needs. If you need a strong long range poke mage, go the AP build of Manamune and Ludens. If you need a fast paced burst assassin, go Eclipse, Nashos, and Shadowflame. If you need a tank buster, go Kraken and Rageblade. The pure ability of this champion to be viable in many different situations allows for ADCs to one trick this champion and every game adopt a different playstyle. Similarly to Kaiser, Varus is also a versatile champion with a greater than average laning ability no matter what you do. Lethality items are still very strong on this champ and once you master his easy to execute trade patterns it becomes very apparent just how easy it is to pilot Varus in a lot of different scenarios. We personally feel that the nerfs to Senna do not do much to actively affect the way that she typically wants to play. Of course, Less damage on her Q does impact her later trade patterns, but early game, it's going to feel almost negligible. The difference in damage isn't too steep, and the champion will feel the same as before in 14.5. The main adjustments in this patch to the jungle were the aforementioned changes to Sunfire, the nerfs to Zac, Belveth, Brand and Evelyn, and the buffs to Javan, Wukong, Rek'Sai and Kane. Overall, we feel there are very minimal changes to the top tiers of the jungle role in this patch, excluding the gutting of Belveth and the overcooked buffs to Wukong. Belveth received some much needed nerfs to her E in this patch, which hurts her a lot in her early fighting potential and brings her into a much more balanced state, which of course moves her down the list. And with the game pace accelerating, these nerfs hurt a lot of her fighting potential, which is generally how she was able to force her early game advantages to allow herself time to scale. The Sunfire changes allow for a much clearer and stronger rush item for tank junglers like Rel, Sejuani and Maokai, which need strong early items to force advantages in the early early game to allow for much easier fighting conditions. This will offset a lot of the overall nerfs to the tank player style in the jungle and will allow them to match the one item spikes of bruises at least a little bit. Same as in top lane, the changes to Wukong have made him one of the premier skirmishing junglers after the level 4 full clear. With Tunneler, you can pick a fight wherever you want on the map and most likely win due to how easy it can be to execute this champ. His team fighting, as previously mentioned, is almost unmatched and as a champ he spikes on literally every every item he purchases, making the game very linear and the win conditions very, very easy to play for. Rek'Sai, similar to last patch, got more quality of life adjustments and buffs, which definitely makes the champion more playable. Actually allowing her attack cancels to work will make the champion as strong as intended, but we fear she may still be slightly missing the mark in terms of overall strength. Time will tell. Maokai got some much needed compensation and reverts to the clear speed nerfs from the last patch, making the champion much more playable again in the jungle and bringing him back into at least a pickable place. This is of course coupled with the changes to Sunfire mentioned above, which impact Maokai nicely. The brand nerfs will push him down a bit, as well as health buffs to tanks and bruises, making it much easier for him to be skirmished upon early. Quite simply, brand's clear speed will no longer be fast enough to compensate for his lack of fighting strength and difficult playing into the mid and late game, which gets bad fast if the enemy is able to get on top of you. There are a few notable changes to support items in this patch which will shift a lot of power away from the overpowered support items for multiple different playstyles while buffing the uninteractive item in Celestial Opposition, making tanky engaged supports that are looking for the 1v9 flanks to engage teamfights much, much better. A surprising change by Riot was the Seraphine rework, which shifts a lot of her power towards the supportive playstyle and less of the carry playstyle. Overall, the changes to her mana and minion damage, coupled with buffs to her fighting and supportive spells, will have her see more time and playability as is support making her a more healthy champion in that role. We are unsure at this time if the changes will be super meaningful, but overall, it's a positive direction if they actually intended for these changes to shift her more toward being a support. The strongest support in the patch after these changes has to be Rakan because of his mobility and ability to find strong fight angles, as previously mentioned. A good Rakan can charm his way into a one team fight no matter what in 14.5. Another champion we would like to highlight because of his ability to find more time is to abuse enemies early is Pike. If you simply want to make the enemy's existence a living nightmare, we suggest you invest some time into this champion. It is strong 
And coupled with the fact that Enchanters will have less damage reduction from Dreamweaver, you will find even more opportunities to assassinate the enemy's ADC on cooldown. And that is going to be all for this happy little tier list. What do we get wrong? Let us know down below. And hey, why are you down there? Why not sign up to GameLeap.com where we have hundreds of League of Legends guides guaranteed to catapult your game to the next level. All you got to do is click the link at the top of the description box. We'll see you over there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you also did enjoy this one. I'm going to catch you all to stay a tad bit later.